email, I did a campaign a couple of years ago where I said, you know what, I came across this quote and said that text offers are redeemed eight times more than emailed offers. I was like, what? No way, eight times more? So you're telling me if I'm normally getting 100 people to register on my email campaign, if I did that same campaign via text, I would get 800 people? No way, no way, I have to test this. So I did. So I had an email, about 6,500 people, over 6,000, right? 6,571 to be exact. Uh, I had an email campaign go out for an event I was promoting. I was like, hey, I got this event. I'm gonna give them free tickets to this event. I'm gonna pay for their lunch. I'm just gonna give them the works. Let's just see how many people show up for it, right? I'm just gonna give it to them. So 6,571 people that I had spent years, okay? I had started my business in 2011. And I said, I get hundreds of networking events all the time, getting business cards, going home, getting those business cards on my email list, getting them an email out, just sending value, campaign after campaign after campaign. We've all been there, right? And what ended up happening is I got 6,500 emails and I'm thinking, nice, I got 6,500 people I can now invite to my stuff. I sent out this email, right? I don't know if you guys are seeing this little pop-up here. Let me get it up because I think it's because of the chats coming in. A little pop-up sound comes in. So 6,500 emails go out. I send out an email to say, hey, go uh, invite. I got this event coming up. Here's a link. Go sign up. It's just free. Boom. 500 and let me see how exactly where open. 506 emails were opened out of the 6,571 people. 33 people then clicked on my registration link to go register. Okay. 33 people. I was like, okay. 33 registrations, that's not bad, right? 6,500 sent out one invite, 33 people went and signed up. All right, cool, right? Some people, that's okay. Uh, then I started looking at, well, that text offer thing, let me see if, how that works. At that point, I had just a little over 500 cell phone numbers in my Rolodex, right? I wasn't really tracking cell phone numbers too much, I was tracking emails. So 532 text messages uh, were sent out. 516 of them were read. And out of those 516 that were open, 256 people went and clicked on my registration link to go sign up. Event completely filled out after that text. And since that day, I stopped sending email campaigns. You can probably see why, right? I mean, 33 clicks to sign up out of 6,500 emails versus 256 people to go sign up off of 530 something text messages. I was like, what? Crazy. And since then, that's all I've been focused on capturing first. Now you still need emails. You still need followers on social media. I'm not telling you to go throw all of that away. What I'm telling you is your data needs to focus mobile first. All right, so capture the cell phone number because cell phone numbers have a 98% open rate with a 45% response rate. You don't even get 45% open rates on your email or a 45% reach on your social media or a 45% opt-in on your website, okay? But you're gonna get 98% open rates on your cell phone numbers. Now, question I get a lot of time is how do you capture the cell phone number? How do I get the cell phone number? Well, you gotta give them value. So here's what I do. And this ties into how you monetize your events as well. My focus to who I do business with is speakers, coaches, authors, consultants. So I put them all in the same room and then I find people that also do business with that same community and say, hey, you should be in my room. You should be in these events. After starting to host a couple of events, people start asking me, Manny, uh, why don't you have your own like mastermind group? And I was like, hmm, that could be a really effective way to fund events. Follow me here. You get the mastermind group. You say, look, this mastermind group, I'm going to give you guys all of these exclusive opportunities that I don't give anybody else. When I started this idea, I was just saying, hey, I'm going to host events and you get invites first before they sell out. Because most of the time I was selling out my events and I had some value. I could say, look, I'm going to put you on this invite list. You get invited to these opportunities before anybody else. Right. They were paying to join this mastermind group. I get enough to pay the join mastermind group and have enough to fund my events. Pretty simple, right? So just reverse engineer those numbers. And those same mastermind group people would be the people that wanted to do business with the people I brought in the room, all right? So data 
is very important. Make sure you are reaching the target market that you do business with. Those are the people you want in the room. And then your speakers, your sponsors, the people that you end up monetizing before the event, those are your mastermind group members. Those are the ones that are getting promoted. Those are the ones getting opportunities. And just make sure those people don't compete with what you do. I mean, it's really that simple, guys. So data is really focused on mobile first, capture the cell phone number, and then systems. Let's talk about that. Now, I'm going to go over some of these if there's any questions that maybe pop up. So let me give some shout outs here. Barbara, she is a researcher, educator, uh, customer equals students. Hmm. Tell me more about that. Uh, coaching pre-meds is Renee. Uh, Carrie, she's teaching experts how to engage online, mostly solopreneurs and small business. Uh, Jessica, workflow mobile app development. Sandra, one data, two systems. I think she's writing down my stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, Brigetta, closed door summits, organizers in automotive industry. All right. Uh, Annie, connecting entrepreneurs with experts in the areas of health, wealth, personal growth, business development. Lauren, business consulting, sporting inventors and companies develop and bring new products to market. Customers equal inventions or inventors, beauty brands, product based. Oh, duh, like I told you guys who's your customer. I was like, why are people putting customers equal? <laughs> I was like, hmm, interesting. I forgot my own thing. How funny. All right, so Karen, she says, provide simple solutions for wellness and immunity with improved blood flow, clean food, and pure high frequency air and water. So looking at what you guys do, the first thing you want to do, take a look at what you do and the market you serve. And this is where you're going to come up with your lead graph. This is what's going to get them to give you their cell phone number. All right. So step one, get a piece of paper and pen. All right. So step one is you're going to write down. This is the best gift you can give somebody to automatically position you as an expert and help you fill your room for your events of your potential clients. All right. So if you want to do that, write this down. First thing you want to do is you wanna take a list of all of the questions that you keep getting asked about these ideas. So let's take Annie's for example, connecting entrepreneurs with experts in the areas of health, wealth, personal growth, and business development, all right? Annie, she helps entrepreneurs. So her market is gonna be entrepreneurs. Now, what are the questions that entrepreneurs ask her about those topics, all right? So Annie's gonna go write those down. She's going to say, oh, well, they asked me about this. 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 She's going to have a list of questions that the entrepreneurs are asking her. And then she's going to have a list of questions that they're not asking her. All right. The questions are like, man, they should be asking these questions because if they did, man, they would be knowing a lot of information. Because Annie, for example, probably has years. In this arena, you can help them understand how to navigate. You want to help the day one of your industry all right don't think that you have to come in and be the person that tells the seven figure strategies and you haven't sold seven figures in your life don't do that the most profound statement i heard about teaching was this third graders can teach second graders all right think about this wherever you're at in life whether you are a day one entrepreneur yourself whether you are years in the industry whether you have created legacy type success with what you do, you can teach the people behind you. Don't focus on the people in front of you. That's who you learn from. You be a sponge for knowledge for those people. But the people behind you, those are the ones you teach. And you got to teach them in a way that you can serve them for free and monetize. All right. Because you have the ability to do so with the technology of systems that we have today. We're going to take a YouTube channel as your system, right? This is your gift that you're giving them is simply playlists. That's it. You're going to give them playlists of exclusive content when all you're really doing is answering each of those questions in short five minute videos. Let me walk you through this. All right. So let's take Annie, for example, and she's wrote down a bunch of questions about entre uh, what entrepreneurs would ask her about health, about wealth, about personal growth and about business development. All right. She's got multiple topics that she can go with. So we're gonna write these down. So we're gonna have health. That's gonna be one playlist. We're gonna have wealth. That's another playlist. We're gonna have personal growth. That's another playlist. Are you guys getting this, right? You getting this? It's just taking the topics that you teach on 
and you're making those playlists on your YouTube, all right? Follow me here. And then business development's her last one, all right? So Annie's gonna have four playlists that she's gonna have on YouTube. She's gonna then make short five, two to five minute videos where she's just gonna answer three simple questions about that question, all right? So for example, let's take health. Annie, if you're watching right now, go ahead and comment a question that you would get on the area of health for entrepreneurs. And while you're putting that in there, I'm gonna go ahead and just make one up for you to start. So let's say, why do entrepreneurs need to focus on health? All right, that could be a great question that she gets from entrepreneurs, right? Why should I as an entrepreneur really focus on my health? You know, I need to focus on making money, not focusing on eating green salads, right? Or something like that, right? So that could be a great question she gets a lot. So she's gonna answer that in a short two to five minute video. In this video, you're only gonna answer three simple things, the what, the why, and the how. That's it, nothing else. Not gonna talk about stats and figures. You're just gonna talk about what, why, how in two to five minutes. Okay, we wanna give them the Costco sample for free and hopes that they're gonna come to you and say, I want more, I need more, right? So watch me here. So she's gonna go, why do entrepreneurs need to focus on health? So her video starts off with the what. What is the question that she's about to answer? So her video could start with something like, you know what, I get asked all the time by entrepreneurs that I'm helping in my business, why do entrepreneurs need to focus on health? Boom, you just answered the what in the first 10 seconds of your video. And you've explained who the market is that you serve. Psychological here, folks. So the next one is the why, right? The why is gonna give them a little snip of why you need to watch this video if you're an entrepreneur and you don't know what I'm about to tell you, this could lead to some FOMO, right? Fear of missing out on information, on education, on resources, something you have that they need and you're about to give it to them, all right? That is your why. You explain that in a short little snip, maybe 10 seconds there. And then you go to your how. Your how is a story about an experience that you actually had, all right? Keep in mind. So I'm gonna go and just pretend I'm Annie, all right? How to handle stress. Let's go with that one. So she just puts out how to handle stress. So let's go with, all right, she starts off a video. You know what? I get asked all the time by entrepreneurs that I'm helping and what I do in my business on how to handle stress. One of the biggest things that they're focusing on. And if, I don't know if you know this, but man, if you don't know this structure I'm about to share with you, my client that didn't have this, man, she ended up doing this, right? Or it just gives some reason why they need to pay attention to this, right? That FOMO. And then she just says the actual answer, right? Don't hide it behind a webinar. Don't hide it behind a program you're selling for $300. Hide it behind nothing. Just give it to them as if they just paid you 10 grand and said, teach me Obi-Wan, right? Think about that. Here's why, 97% of the time, when you give them the blueprint for free, the secret sauce, 97 out of 100 people won't take first step, not even the first step without you. They're gonna see you as the expert on the topic you're sharing, and they're just gonna come to you when they have questions. So remind, let's just rewind here. You're creating these videos. You're creating them on the topic you're an expert on. You're telling them who you're doing business with in these videos. That way they know who you're trying to attract. And then you just give them the how through actual experience of what you've done, all right? So something that Annie could share is how to handle stress. She could talk about one of the clients that she gave some advice on stress, gave them a process, gave them a step-by-step, -step, whatever it was, and they were able to get that completed. They were able to go from this to this in a set amount of time, right? That's all people wanna know. They wanna know what result you can give them, why is this result important for them to even have or know about, and how can they actually implement the result? They wanna know when they can see results. So just focus on that, all right? So that's a simple strategy to give your secret sauce away for free in little Costco samples. And every time you have an idea, you're just gonna grab your phone, you're gonna take it out in selfie mode, right? Boom, selfie mode. Uh, and then you're just going to put it on video and talk, right? You're just gonna say, hey, you know what? 
all this time, I'm getting asked question after question after question. One of the biggest things I get asked is about stress. Why do entrepreneurs need to handle stress? Well, the reason why I would assume, if you know about this and this and this or whatever it is, right? But here's what I told my client. You know, this client, Jennifer, she came to me a couple of weeks ago and she shared with me how stressful things were getting with all of this crazy news going on. And she just didn't know what to do. So I outlined my three-step process that I'm sharing with entrepreneurs constantly. And here are what it was. I told her to do this. I told her to do this. And I told her to do this. And literally within a week, she was calling me about a complete transformation in her home because she finally understood why it was happening, right? So bam, I just gave you guys that two to five minute video. And at the end of that video, you invite them to text you, right? I use a service called Text Magic. There's Twilio, Scipio. There's all kinds of different services out there, but a dedicated cell phone number, right? I have a full 10-digit number, 714-369-8528. It's not one of those short code numbers. It's a full 10-digit number. And that is my 24-7 hotline to ask me any question on systems, on branding, on automation, the things that I specialize in. So for Annie, Annie would say, hey, you have any questions on health, on wealth, on personal development, on personal growth, business strategies, text me. Text me this. Here's my phone number, personal line. You can reach me 24-7. Just text me anything you have a question on. And then what's really cool about these systems is that they have what's called automation, automation follow-ups, right? So I can even structure a way where if they, like today, I was telling people on Facebook, to say, hey, if you guys want to get access to Remo, I'm live right now on Remo. Text me the word Remo, right? They text me the word Remo. My system, while I'm live here with you guys, is automatically texting them back with the link to hop on live. You could do this with anything, with your platforms, with your Facebook groups, with your free content, with your YouTube channel playlists. Wink, wink. So look at it. Wink, wink. Why is this a wink, wink? Wink, wink. Totally messing it up there, guys. All right. So I think you guys can understand the strategy. It's really simple. It's you take what it is that you know. Think of it like this. It's kind of like you're giving away the map for free and you only charge them to be the guide and charge high ticket, right? If you're a specialist at what you do, and I've tested this. I took a day one entrepreneur at my last year's event in March. She came to me in March, actually, in April's event we had her at. She came to me in March. She just had nothing but an idea. She says, no, I want to help women. I don't even have a name for my company yet. And I went on Facebook and we all voted to make up a name for her company. And then we went and uh, launched it at my event, told everybody this was a guinea pig business, brand new. This is day one. You guys are all going to be guinea pigs if you all did business with her. And within a week, she was closing $5,000 coaching clients. And within seven months, she broke a six-figure business on an idea that was easy and fun for her that so many other women struggled with. And she understood that. And every single one of you have that same exact value point. You have a genius inside of you that to you is super simple. Think of the things that are fun, easy, and simple for you. That there's a whole huge market out there that is a challenge for it. Like for me, I love spreadsheets. I can color code them. I could sit all day. I remember I was sitting just a couple of weeks ago, like like this, <sighs> like admiring my work on a spreadsheet. I'm like, I am really weird, right? But then I have clients and I've noticed this, most of my clients that hire me for what I do and what I can teach them, the spreadsheets to them, they're like, ah, don't, don't, don't show me a spreadsheet. They're, they're afraid of them, right? So look at that in your business. Everyone wants to think that, I won't say everyone, that, that's just kind of putting everybody in a box. A lot of people that come across think that have it, they have such a lack mentality. They think there's not enough opportunities for everybody, that not everybody's going to do it this way, that, oh, well, people don't like it if I do it this way. Like, no, forget it, okay? Understand that you have a value to bring to the world. You are not a chameleon to go be somebody else. You are somebody who is actively creating and building your own dream. That is your dream, right? Your dream to bring your ideas to the marketplace. 
there is, trust me, I mean, 7 billion people. Do you think you've had a chance to introduce what you do to all 7 billion of them or 8 billion that there is about now? And a couple of years from now, 9 billion. I mean, you can't keep up with the amount of population that's already growing, let alone market to the people that are even starting day one in your business every single day. I mean, think about it. Everything that you do. Let's take Annie. Annie, how long have you been in business uh, with what you do? How long have you been learning about your industry? How long have you been a sponge for knowledge for what you teach today? And I guarantee you, right, whether it's a year, 10 years, 20 years, she has knowledge and experience that if she went back to day one, she'd be like, oh, man, I would totally do things different. I would have made sure I didn't do this. I would have made sure I would have done this. I would have totally not even wasted my money on that. I mean, you all have that. Right. Think of all of these little things that you could just document in a short two to five minute video, put it on demand and say, hey, give me your cell phone number and I'll send it to you for free. Right. Give it to them for free, knowing 97 out of 100 of them, they're just going to see you as the expert on that topic. Right. And here's what I do. This is my step by step of how to monetize and fill my events. What I do is I have and this is why I kind of built all this up first for you guys before I told you the whole process was to really understand the value in data and systems. If you don't have the right systems, if you're using email marketing, you're gonna get 8% open rates, right? 8%, so that means less than one out of 10 people are seeing your update. That's eight out of 100 people that you subscribe to. You get them to give you their email address. They said yes, right? They're like, I wanna stay connected. Let me know what you got going on. Keep me informed, right? What happens? They don't register. You're like, what's going on? They're not opening my emails. They're not clicking on my links. They're saturated. I mean, how many unread emails do you have in your inbox right now? 10,000, 20,000, 5,000. I got like multiple inboxes with 10, 20,000 emails in there, right? How many unread text messages do you have though? Mm -hmm. I bet you less than five. I bet, I bet. Why? Because we read our text messages. We may not respond to everyone, of course, but we read every single one, right? And that's the power that most businesses don't understand. They have no mobile strategy. You know, less than 5% of businesses today have a mobile strategy, less than 5%. So you'll completely separate yourself just by having a mobile strategy, right? So I focus text first, get a system, even if you're just putting it on your own phone and doing it that way. I was doing that for years. It's time consuming, don't do that. I use text magic now. I can open up 500 conversations instantly and the rest of the time because that would take me literally, if I was trying to copy and paste, like let's say I had 500 cell phone numbers and I wanted to copy paste. When I did this campaign in 2016, I copy pasted every single one. Hi, Mary. I got an event coming. Copy paste. Hi, Mary. Got an event coming. Copy paste. Hi, Mary. Got an event coming. Copy paste. 10 hours of copy paste that now got replaced to 10 seconds. All right. Time is going to be the most powerful factor you have in your marketing, in your follow-ups, and all the processes in between. So here's my step-by-step. -step. First thing I do is I get a list of cell phone numbers. That could be my existing Rolodex on my phone. That could be my friends on Facebook. I inbox one by one, and I say, hey, I want to send you a free gift. I want to keep you on my invite list. Whatever value you want to put in front of them to say, hey, give me your cell phone number. I want to add you to my invites, to something I'm doing, to my exclusive, whatever it is that you make it to get them value. I do stuff like, hey, I've got free blueprints. I've got all kinds of opportunities. I've got events I'll copy tickets for. I never sell via text. There's no actual go buy this with this special discount code. None of that. If there's anything to buy, I ask them if they're interested and then I'll send it to them if they say yes but I don't go and just try to spam them with anything to buy. That will immediately, one, it's illegal, don't do that. Uh, two, it's gonna get ignored very quickly. Your, your message, I mean, think about it. If every day you got a message from, let's say Grant Cardone, right? You're in email, if you're on Grant Cardone's email list, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Every day, there's something to buy, right? Something to buy. And yet you get tone deaf after a while, and I'm not opening up the emails anymore, and that's probably what ends up happening with a lot of them. They just stop getting read. But if every time he sent me an email, it was a free gift, it was something that he said, hey, this is completely free to you. How many people would not open up those emails? Very little, if they understood the value. And that's the same thing that happens with text. I text, it's gonna reach them almost 100% of the time, but I focus on just 100% value. Hey, I got a free thing. Hey, did you know about this? Hey, it's free, 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 right? 
I created all kinds of gifts because here's the thing. If you understand the process of sales, and I'm a big data guy myself, so I understand the numbers. This may go right over your head to some people, but 80% of your sales are five to 12 contacts in. Only 2% of sales will happen on the first contact. And most speakers out there, hate to say it, the ones that are selling from stage, they're just chasing the 2%. They just want to close whatever they can, go on to the next, on to the can, on to the next, whatever they can, on to the next. My focus and what you should focus on is building the relationships. This is why I focus on getting the cell phone number first. I just want to give them something for free. Like if I'm on stage, if I'm at an event, if I'm speaking, uh, usually what I do is I say, hey, I've got all of my gifts. I've created a platform. It's kind of like a Facebook group on steroids in a sense. But I created my own platform. And really, it's a way to just bring everybody into my own ecosystem. And I put all of my gifts. I've created over 20 gifts, everything from how to promote their business for free, my courses, my PDFs, whatever I want that's value. could be links to playlists on YouTube, whatever it is, right? I've got 20 now, over 20, that I give away for free. And now, regardless of who I come across, if my target market, I come across and I meet them, there's at least one gift I can put in front of them that I can get their cell phone number for. Mm -hmm. Remember that. You can start with one. Your gift could be as simple as your YouTube playlist. It could then become a, a PDF blueprint you give a step-by-step. -step. It could be a keynote presentation that you give and you don't share with nobody. It's exclusive. You just put it right on your platform or you send it on a private link, right? So just think of the things that you can have as a gift that you can have to just bring value to them, knowing that 80% of the clients you'll do business with, you'll need up to a dozen contacts or more before they say, yes, I'm going to do business with you. You may have the perfect product. They may need your stuff, but they still need to trust you. They still need to build a relationship with you, right? If you're chasing what 90% of entrepreneurs chase, which is the first three contacts, that's one out of 10 of your sales. The only way you get a higher percentage is if you're just using NLP tactics or you're selling from stage because you got an authority and everyone next to you is buying, and then you're just overselling the room. If you're selling more than 10% of the room, Anybody that's bought over that didn't need to buy it. They just threw away their money. This is why I recommend no selling from stage at your events. Focus on data. Focus on what I do is I set up texting keywords for my speakers and my sponsors. So this way, nobody has to get sold at the events. Nobody has to have order forms in the back of the room. We set up follow-up processes. You say, hey, set up a texting keyword for the speaker, right? They text in and now all of the opportunities that they want to capture and collaborate one they have cell phone numbers and they can text them and follow up or take them right to their calendar. So let me just give you a kind of a clear step-by-step -step, uh, as hoped I'm not going too far on to all the different topics and ideas we're sharing here. So hopefully I'm keeping you guys pretty organized. Uh, but to simplify this, let's to kind of bring it back to our step one to step five structure. We have first, you need to identify your market. Who is the people you want at your events? Who are the people you want doing business with you? And ideally, what you want to look at who your market is, is who is going to buy your high ticket program, your most expensive stuff, right? Focus on high ticket as much as you can if you're a consultant or a coach or a speaker, right? This is where your money is going to be made. It's not going to be made selling tickets to the events. Trust me, I know all the big event producers, they lose money on almost all of their events, right? Almost all of them when they sell out their events, $50,000 tickets, $5,000 tickets, but yet they had to spend a million dollars on speaker fees, right? So what I do in my events is I don't pay speaker fees, very rarely. The most I've ever done is I've covered travel for a speaker and we've had some high level speakers. I mean, we're talking Dan Fleshman, we're talking Caleb Maddox, we're talking the founder of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, the founder of Kajabi, I mean, we're just talking big names and I get them to waive the speaker fees. Why? Because I don't sell at my events, right? If you remove the sell from stage from your events, the high level speakers will love to collaborate on an opportunity that is not a big pitch fest. So that's step one. So the market I go is the people I want to put in the room is the people I want to buy a high ticket program. Let's go with, let's say a $2,500 program to start off with, okay? So if I want to sell a $2,500 program, then for me, I want to get the people who are going to buy that program in the room. Knowing 80% of the sales are going to happen after about a dozen contacts, I'm going to give them my ticket to my event 
for free, right? So I tell them, hey, I'm gonna give you a free ticket to my event. All I need is your cell phone number and I'll send you the event registration. And the event registration will be qualifying questions. What's your business revenue? Uh, do you have a website? Do you have employees? Whatever the qualifying questions you would need to know on whether or not you can help that person. And if you find somebody that could be a potential pr prospect, give them free value in exchange for questions answered that you would want to know. Think about doing that little qualifying call that you would be able to do with them, but you can do it digitally, right? So that's kind of the concept. So market is number one, identifying who I'm bringing to my event. Two is the experience. What is your experience that is separating you from everybody else? My experience for CERVEX when I do my events is one, there's no speaker selling from Sage, huge value, they love that. Two, the networking exercises. I piggyback off of a brand called CEO Space. Uh, I'm a member of them since 2012, and they do this really fun networking exercise called Snap, where you just go, you get to meet everybody around. So we do something similar, I call it Action Takers Networking, where we go table to table, you get five minutes to go around and say, hey, this is what I do, this is what I need, and here's how uh, we can collaborate. Right? It's kind of like how Remo does the networking. We get to go table to table. We get to talk about what we do. We get to connect on LinkedIn. Same concept, right? You now have that experience of networking. So that's what I think Remo separates itself from everybody else is it's not Zoom like everybody else. You've got this differentiating factor. You've got an experience now versus just bringing people into a virtual event to try and sell them some program again. So different, right? Makes it different. When you have cell phone numbers, you can actually invite and actually people will see it, right? Very easy. So market, uh, you understand that. Why are my pens? None of my pens are working. Of course, of course, right when I need them. I've got this huge pen that I use, but I ran out of ink a couple, a couple of things ago. Let me see if it's yeah, I'm still out of ink. I really like that one. I'm gonna have to refill it when I haven't been able to find uh, a place that puts a big old ink thing like that. All right, so we have the experience, we have the market, now, three is the systems, all right? Systems. Now, what I do in my follow-up process, if I'm going to have events, what I do for a digital event, uh, I could fill one as easily as one week, right? It could be, because if it's text, it's, it's easy. I just text a batch of people, uh, and with a service like Text Magic or Twilio or Scipio or any one of these systems out there, usually with a local number, like a full 10-digit number, you can text about 500 people in a day. You can open up conversations with hundreds of people instantly versus having to do it all one by one. So it's very effective for me. I use that type of system. I just take a batch. I'll say, all right, I want to invite these 2,000 people to my event, right? Here's the numbers on uh, events, by the way, for me at least. Uh, whatever I invite, who, how, whatever the amount is, 10% of the invites show up to my event, right? That's my number. So if I want 200 registrations or uh, or 200 people at my event, then I'll invite 2,000 people. Pretty simple, right? And my structure is pretty easy. I'll do, if I'm doing a live event for physical, I'll do a 30 day, um, either a 60 day or a 30 day, invite by text to say, hey, I've got an event on this date, are you available? That's it, I just say, hey, Michael, or whatever their first name is, I have an event on this day, are you available? Is your calendar open? Super simple, one line, open the conversation, don't try to give them a link, don't tell them all the details about it, where it's at and all that. Let that happen in the conversation. They're gonna ask you all the questions they wanna know. So just ask them if they're open, is they are the actually available that day for the event, right? And you can do the same thing with a remote type structure as well, to say, hey guys, uh, are you available? I would do uh, probably a 30 day or two week for, for digital events. You don't need to do too big of a, or a reminder for uh, digital. Physical, yes, they got to travel and do all that stuff. But for digital, they can just hop on while they're driving around. I mean, probably not. I don't want to do that, but you get what I'm saying. So I do a 30-day invite. And then once I get the 30 days, what will happen is I'll have three different groups or four different groups, rather. I'm going to have the yeses. I'm going to have the noes. I'm going to have the maybes. And I'm going to have the no answers. Okay? So you got yes, no, maybes and the no answers, okay? These are four different groups that you are now creating from your first invite, okay? So if you're using something like a text magic or some similar system, uh, what I do is I'll take four to 500 people a day and I'll just text them for a full week, right? Four or 500 people, 
and just reach out until I hit all 2,000 or whatever the number is. And every day, I'll do it at a morning or afternoon. It doesn't really matter what time. Uh, you're going to typically get the same amount of response if it's typically within normal business hours. But I'll just text them, hey, are you available? They'll say yes, so they'll say no, they'll say maybe, or they just won't respond, right? For the yeses, I add them to you are confirmed. You are on my invite list to make sure you're registered, right? For the no's, I just notate that. I have a little spreadsheet, makes it easy. Maybes, I put them on a little different category. These are maybes, they haven't made a decision yet. And then I have my no answers, they haven't responded, right? So notating all this is very effective. And then the yeses at the two week mark, you send them a reminder. Now the reminder is not just, hey guys, reminder of the events happening this day and this time. That's dumb, that's a waste of time. You wanna remind them with an added value. And if you're smart, you held back a few things that you have for the event before this point. So you've got a two week reminder, you've got a one week reminder, you've got a three day before the event reminder, and then you've got a day of or a day before. You might even be able to do both, okay? So uh, the two week reminder, all of these reminders are added value points. They're like, hey, just announced we added on XYZ as a bonus speaker. Hey, just announced there's free gifts that we're going to be offering between these times. Hey, just announced one of our sponsors just added all of this added value. So you're just continuously reminding them of why they want to keep coming and reminding them, oh, man, there's even more. Oh, man, there's even more. Oh, man, there's even more. Right. So you keep building up this value. I hope this is all making sense. If you guys are getting good value out of this, put this in the comments. If there's any questions on this, please put this in the comments. But I'm hoping I'm keeping this pretty clear as a process for you. Uh, so first off, you want to make sure you have something of value you can bring. You all are going to be able to have Remo. And Remo is going to be a very effective way to separate yourself from everybody else. You can simply say, hey, you want to check out a virtual summit that's not Zoom. <laughs> right? That could be a really awesome way to separate yourself because everyone's getting inundated with the Zoom invites. So we can now separate ourselves just with the Remo factor alone. Right. And then saying you have networking sessions. Hey, we're doing a networking event online. That's not Zoom that you're going to love. Ugh. So come check it out. Right. And your focus is always cell phone first. I don't want personal address. I don't want any email. I don't want their website. I don't want anything else unless I have their cell phone number first. If I have cell phone number. Great. Let's have everything else after that. But if I have the cell phone number, I can reach them. I can put them into a group. I can have them in a certain list. I can invite two opportunities and they'll actually see it. So very, very effective. Uh, your experience, you gotta have a different experience than everybody else. Remo is that different experience, right? Having the networking, that's different experience. Having the type of speakers that will come in and teach, that's your different experience. Uh, your experience could also be exclusivity, right? We were talking about this during one of the, uh, the last sessions about scarcity or exclusivity, right? Some people like to use their marketing for their events on a structure of scarcity. Hey guys, we need to do this now, early bird specials and stuff like that. Um, what I like to do is not use the word scarcity, but use the word exclusivity. Exclusivity has a value point to that. People wanna be part of exclusive. They don't care about scarcity. That's just abundant mindset people that doesn't attract them at all. You're only gonna reach the scarcity mindset and you don't want those people in your network, to be honest. I'll be 100% honest. You want to keep scarcity mindset people away from you. You want abundant C mindset people. You're not going to attract them with scarcity marketing tactics. You'll attract them with exclusivity marketing tactics. They want to integrate and use their time wisely, right? They want to serve. They want to give back. And knowing where they're giving back is valuable. So exclusivity gives that value. It's the same exact thing in a sense, scarcity versus exclusivity, but in a sense, it's a different mindset of thinking. You're giving them value in a exclusive structure versus trying to scare them to buy. So it's a little different. Uh, so that's just a little keyword that you wanna utilize right there. Um, when we talk about systems, it's really just about automating the process, right? Instead of you as a human doing it one by one yourself, using a system to do it, right? Like right now, when I invited people to this event, I had a Facebook post that I did on one Facebook post alone. We had about 40 people say, I want to get information about this event. Tell me more, 
right? They're like, what's this Remo thing you're talking about? So I just made sure I had all their cell phone numbers. All right, let me your cell phone number and I'll send you info once we're ready. And instead of me having to send them all info one by one, I just put all their cell phone numbers in one list on my system and I can text them all with one message. So today I just said, hey guys, we're in Remo, hop in, boom, copy paste link, send it to everybody, instantly send it to them without me having to spend 20 minutes doing it one by one or probably about 40 minutes in that sense. So it's the time saving that you get with the systems. If you can automate the process, you're going to get far better results than you trying to do it yourself one by one. I mean, we have more than enough things to do as entrepreneurs and CEOs of our companies. We should not be doing the redundant task of prospecting and marketing, which could be taking up to 50% or more of your time. That Imagine how many more people you could serve if you can automate. Just like this, I'll give you an example. As I'm speaking to you right now, my platform, Manifestation School of Business, is serving over 8,000 students globally, 65 different countries, and the platform speaks 22 different languages so far. I speak English, and I can barely speak a little Spanish, right? But my system can do all of that simultaneously. I'm serving in 65 countries, speaking 22 different languages, and I'm serving 8,000 plus members right now, right? That's the power of what systems can do. You can't do that by yourself, right? We're only one person. You've got to have systems in your business. Uh, and then the follow-up process, right? Remember, we want to give out the invite in about 30 days out. We want to just invite them to say, hey, are you available? And this would be kind of the step-by-step -step, so you guys can map this out. What I do is I'll send them a text. I'll say something like, uh, hey, how is your schedule look this date? I'm hosting an event. We'd love to see you, right? They go, oh, I'm available, right? Perfect. I'll add you on my guest list. If I already have their email and all the other stuff, then I just, if I have name, email, and some other basic content, then I just say, hey, perfect. You're on the list, right? No need to do anything. Do you want to add a plus one? Very important. Make sure that if you're giving them for free access to your education, Tell them, invite somebody. Hey, man, invite somebody. Bring a, bring somebody that's just like you. I want people like you in my network. Bring one more person like you when you come on, join us. That's all, right? Whether it's live, whether it's physical, do the same thing, right? And then I will send them a reminder two weeks out that will say, hey, we just added X, Y, Z. Uh, just, just throw a reminder out there, boom, right? Then I'll, one week later, same thing, boom, some value, some other value point. Now, if you want to monetize before the event, my recommendation is to use memberships. I like memberships because it gives that exclusivity and it allows me to pre-screen and qualify. And there's a reason behind it. So if you ever heard of things like mastermind groups, right? Those are very popular. Um, so my structure is I created my own mastermind group. I then created it very high ticket, right? I, when I launched it, I told people before I even had the thing, right? I was like, all right, this is nothing but an idea. My membership is going to be a $5,000 membership in a couple of years, uh, or maybe even by next year. But right now you can come in. And since it, you're going to be a guinea pig on this whole process, you can come in at a fraction of the cost, right? It doesn't have to be scarcity. It just has to be real. <laughs> you can just be honest, people. It's really not that hard to be honest with people and just say, look, this is a brand new idea. I have no proven results on this. I would love to have you in it because I think you'd be a great fit for what I'm trying to build and who I'm going to bring to this ecosystem in this mastermind group. Uh, so if you want to become part of one of our founding members, I can bring you in for a fraction of the cost of what I'm going to charge everybody else. But once we start getting results, this price point is going to go up, right? That's what I was telling everybody when I launched my mastermind group. And within our first month, over $20,000 in sales on a $500 product, right? Where I was like, look, you're coming in for nothing burgers on this. Uh, just to come in, right? And boom, $20,000 in sales our first month, over a quarter of a million dollars in sales within the first 12 months after that, completely funded my entire school of business. Because my idea when I created this was to be the funding arm of my From Orphan to CEO project, right? A little bit about me. I was left in a car at 18 months uh, with nothing but a diaper on uh, with my sister who's about 11 months older than me. And we were put into foster care where we were bounced around many times. Um, for many years, I've suffered everything from malnutrition, abuse, neglect, and even torture. And I don't say these things for you to be sorry or feel sorry for me or anything like that. The reason I mention these things is because these things are still happening today, 30 years later, 
in the foster care system. And it happens so much that two out of three of these kids are ending up dead, homeless, or in jail within just one year of aging out of our foster care system. Now, me personally, I ended up getting a forever family, but I ended up homeless twice by the time I was 24. So it's really just falling in and statistic just like these kids. And what helped me, what got me to where I am today, now a paid consultant to over a thousand brands worldwide, named one of the best by Facebook when they hit a million advertisers, featured in Inc. Magazine, you know, got an award-winning platform, featured at Carnegie Hall, all these different success achievements I've been able to create was because I had three things, mentorship, entrepreneurship, and faith. And so a couple of years ago, I created this From Orphan to CEO project where I said, you know what? I want to help kids that are starting day one. They don't have a mentor. They don't even understand what the word mentor means. Like me, when I first had a mentor, I thought the guy was just being weird. He was like, man, I want to be your mentor. I was like, nah, man, I'm married. I don't know what, the, what are you talking about, man. <laughs> and he's like, no, I just want to help you. I, I, I've been where you're trying to go. I have achieved what you're trying to achieve. I can help you, right? And so that's when I got my first taste of a mentor and what it meant to have somebody that believed in me that had already accomplished what I was trying to accomplish. I kept surrounding myself with people that told me no, told me it wasn't possible, told me that my dreams are crazy. And I believed them for many years. And so, so many of these kids do, and this is why they're ending up dead, homeless, or in jail. They've surrounded themselves with no's. And so what I've done is I've taken my ecosystem, my community, my experts and specialists that I surround myself with, and I brought them into my community. And I said, I want to have you guys teach my day one entrepreneurs, my students, my from orphan to CEO students, how to build their own dream, right? And so that's what my whole mastermind group was created for, was to say, look, I want to create an idea to give back. I don't have to charge these kids anything. I just want to create something I can give them for free and fund it through this program. And boom, two years later, this is my platform. 8,000 plus students, 65 different countries and 22 languages so far we've translated it into. And it's a platform I just give them for free. So looking at what you can do and making your experience unique is build a cause-based business model. Have something where you can say, look, I can create something and give it away for free. I don't care if they pay for it. I don't care what, they just have it. It's my gift to the world. And you have something else that funds it, right? We all do that. We all fund our passion with our skill set. And we can all do that as entrepreneurs ourselves. We can take a look at something we know how to teach others to do, document that process in a way that we can give it to them for free and utilize that also to position you as the expert on the topic you get paid for, for the people that can afford to hire the specialist. They don't have time to learn it themselves for free or to learn it on their own on demand. They just want to hire somebody to do it with them or do it for them right? That's the idea of what you can do with your events. Utilize it as a way to attract those people who want to hire you, who want to see you as a specialist. I mean, think about it. You're hosting events. You're trying to be the speaker. You're trying to highlight what it is that you do in your business. It's a prospecting method. So utilize it as such, but do it in a way where you serve your way to success. And the way you do that is create that little playlist on YouTube, right? Cover those topics that we talked about before, and just make sure you speak to the market you're serving. And anytime you come across one of those people, you say, hey, give me your cell phone number. I'll give you whatever it is that you outline as your gift. It could be your playlist on YouTube. It could be your PDFs you're giving out. It could be some video courses. It could be a Kajabi course, whatever it is. But give it away in exchange for data, not money, right? As a first step, this is how you serve your way to success. Because here's the thing. If you look at the numbers, uh, Facebook, for example, they bought WhatsApp. Okay. Remember WhatsApp? $19 billion. Why? It wasn't because of the technology. They can copy paste the code themselves. There's no law behind that. They, they can do that. Why do you think all the features you see in Snapchat and all these other ones are showing up on all the other apps? There's no protection of code anymore. What they valued was data. WhatsApp had 1 billion cell phone numbers, right? And Facebook at a wholesale rate paid $19 for each phone number, and they had to buy a billion of them to get that price, okay? Now just imagine how much is a cell phone number worth of somebody who sees you as an expert, 
who wants access to your education on the stuff that you get paid for. And they're willing to answer a bunch of other questions on top of giving you their cell phone so they can get access to that, right? And then here's your step-by-step -step to monetize. You give them the free gift. It could be a ticket to your event. It could be access to your education. But if you give them access to your education, the best thing you can do is follow up with them a week later and say, hey, how's the blueprint going? I gave you access to all my stuff. How's it going so far? 97 out of 100 people are going to come back to you and say, oh, you know, I haven't even taken the first step. You know, I got so busy with this and this and that and whatever. And they're going to give you every excuse in the book why they didn't take action. But this is the perfect scenario. This is your cue to then say, hey, no worries. Let's hop on a call. I'll show you how to implement it. Here's my calendar. Let's get on a call. Boom. Now you got a bunch more qualifying questions that you got answered. And you get on the call with somebody who already sees you as the expert. They already have your step-by-step -step blueprints. They have the do-it-yourself version for free. They've already proven they can't do it. And they still want you to show them how to implement it. That is the perfect time for you to say, look, You've got the free version step-by-step. Step. Here's a couple of tips on how to implement. Uh, but if you want to really kind of speed up this process, I have a program where in X amount of weeks, we can check off this, 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 and this for you. And it's only going to cost you this much if you want to just knock it out for you. I mean, think about it. What's more effective for you to get somebody to say yes versus having all of those already checked off by the time they got on your phone? That's how you can monetize your structure and all of those people that whether they buy or not, give them tickets to your event. Well, now they get to continuously see your value. They get to get a little bit more of those Costco samples. I mean, think about it. You go to Costco, you try a sample, you're like, oh, that's good. Sometimes you buy it, sometimes you don't. Sometimes it takes you two to three samples for you to end up going to buy, right? So that's kind of the concept digitally is looking at a way to automate what it is that you have as value. So it's on demand 24 seven, people can learn your story, learn your expertise, learn why they should do business with you and have tons of free things to get them to connect where you can just ask them a question, some qualifying question that you're gathering data on in exchange for free value, right? So some of the things that I give away for free as examples, uh, one of the things I have is my educational platform itself, Manifestation, so they can just go into my school, uh, basically all my courses, video courses that are on demand. Um, gift number two is I let them promote their business for free in my platform. So you could use this like a Facebook group. Hey, go to my Facebook group, post on my Facebook group. I'll let you promote your business for free, right? That's another one. I let them submit a video that I'll promote on my platform. You know how easy this is? I tell them, send me a YouTube video and I just add that YouTube video to one of my playlists. Super simple. And I make the playlist a button on the platform. Really easy. Uh, then you have attend or speak at a Cervex event, right? So now I just have them click right into attend or speak at one of my events. They're just filling out a qualifying questionnaire that tell me all about their speaking business. Basically applying to get hired uh, to do one of my stuff. Join influencer council, more of that added benefits. I give them invites to my events. Uh, it's just an added way to get qualifying questions so I can invite them to opportunities, right? Very simple stuff. People fill out questionnaires all the time. So definitely utilize those. Uh, how to create an irresistible offer, how to monetize your Facebook profile, two different programs. There's PDFs that I just put in there, give them away for free. They don't have to give any more information. They click on it and it opens up the PDF. I already have their cell phone number. I could care less. I don't need them to fill out more forms on that. Um, then you have how to monetize systems of automation, how to clone yourself. So basically just courses, access to my calendar, a chapter in my ebook, uh, Facebook group access, Oh, and I even created my own digital token, but that's a whole nother story. So just basically access, access to education, resources, and opportunities. Really simple step. Um, all right, so I'd love to ask any questions that you guys may have. I see a lot of kudos. This is awesome. This is awesome. Good stuff. Systems are key. Excellent advice. Uh, so yes, thank you for all of those. I'd love to be able to answer any questions that you guys may have about events about um, marketing for events, how to get them to show up for the events. And the biggest thing I've seen, the difference maker for me and everybody else that has a trouble with getting people to show up to their events is their reminders. They're counting on email reminders that are typically automated to get them to show up. Terrible way to do it. You want to, especially if you're doing like a live stream, you want to text the day of with the link. 
right? So you can let them know, hey, the two week reminder, uh, we're gonna text you morning of with the access link, right? To keep reminding them on that kind of stuff that we're gonna be texting you morning of with the access link. So having it that structure in your case, if it's a physical event, obviously you just wanna get them the address, uh, of course, well beforehand. But uh, I've hosted events where I didn't give them the address till two days before the event, right? Where they, they just knew what city it was going to be and then that's it. So, um, but digital right now, especially with Remo, we're going to have to use text. Text reminders are going to be very, very powerful. And if you use a simple structure that I've outlined, you've got a 30-day invite, you've got a two-week reminder, you've got a one-week reminder, a three-day before event reminder, and for physical or digital events, you want to use a day of reminder. So that way they know, uh, hey, where's the link? I can just click on it because no matter what, right? Even physical events, I can send them the address three times that week and they will still text me day of with the address right above the text saying, hey, where's the address? It's crazy, I know, but uh, just make sure you're accessible. That's one of the biggest things that you're gonna find uh, on success or not success with events is how accessible are you making it? How uh, much of an experience are you having? Is there any exclusivity or is it just anybody and everybody? And who is going to be in the room, right? That's a really big factor, a point of where are they going to show up? Who's going to be there? Is it just you talking only? Is it going to be other speakers? Are there networking opportunities? And I love to do free gifts. My structure for speakers is I use text magic when I set up text, text and keywords for every speaker. So that way, and I'll be doing this next week when I'm using Remo for my virtual events that I'll be doing consistently. And, uh, and you'll see how that works. But it's simple. I just set up, they'll talk for a certain time. And then I'll say, hey, if you guys want to stay connected, just text in this one word to this one phone number and you'll instantly get their free gift, right? So each of the speakers will have their free gift. That could be their playlist, their platform, their Facebook group, their ebook whatever it is, some gift that positions them as an expert on the topic they're trying to monetize, right? Make sure it's free. No discount to a special offer type stuff that just gets thrown out the window. Because uh, remember, if you're trying to sell on the first contact, you're only gonna sell two out of the hundred possible sales you would have had out of that group, whatever that group would be. So 2% happens on the first contact. 80% of sales are gonna be up to a dozen contacts or more. Uh, would you upsell replays? No, I don't upsell any information. For me personally, I don't sell any information at all. I have no courses for sale. I have no eBooks for sale. Uh, everything that I put as intellectual property, I give away on demand for free. And there's a purpose for that because I'd rather go after the 97% than the 2%. Right, Because if I try to sell a replay, most likely the people I'm trying to sell it to are people that are not already customers. They don't know who I am yet. This would be the first buy that they make within my business. So rather than trying to get them to purchase something small and try to get them to that upsell ladder, I just focus high tickets by giving away everything for free with qualifying questions. Right, So an upsell, for example, I could put, hey, get the replay of this event and I put it on a questionnaire, right? I say, hey, fill out this short questionnaire and you'll instantly get access to the replay. The success page is the replay video. Very easy, but you capture data along the way. I'd rather have data than a sales offer click funnel thing because you're just chasing the 2% of sales, right? It's not, it's not gonna be benefit. Uh, so you only have one offer that high ticket. No, I've got multiple offers. So I have programs that range from 2,500 up to 25,000, depending on what that person needs. But there's never, you can't go online and see any prices, right? So the structure I have is I give free in qualifying content and data that I'm capturing. And then I look at who qualifies on certain arenas and I just reach out, hey, let's get on a call. I think you'd be a great opportunity to collaborate. One phone call could turn into a $10,000 or more client. So for me, I'd rather just, focus on low amount of people I'm talking to, but high quality versus trying to reach anybody and everybody. I let all that digital. I don't want to deal with that on a constant basis. I can hardly keep up with just the Facebook messages alone. I don't keep up with Instagram. I don't keep up with Twitter. I don't keep up with LinkedIn. I uh, don't keep up with my emails. I hardly keep up with text uh, in Messenger. I mean, that alone is keeping me busy. So most people think that they have to be in every type of market 
to have enough opportunities when really you could focus in one good market, one good arena, like 90% of my business this year that I've monetized has come from free posts on Facebook. No ads, no promotion, free posts just talking about life, sharing resources, and then they blow up my inbox with all these questions. It works, okay? I uh, might have missed your replay, but you send out follow-up messages to people who do not respond. Okay, let me show you how you do the maybes and the no answers, all right? So for the yeses, they go into that two-week, one-week thing, right? Now, let's say you get no's. For the no's, I then invite them to a second opportunity. Oh, this one doesn't work. What about this one? Does that work for you? And if they tell me no, no, then I'm like, all right, they're not really interested right now. Let's wait another 30 days, 60 days, and we'll hit them up with something else. Right. And then the maybes, I hit them up and I tell them, all right, I'm going to put you down as a maybe for now. And in about a week before the event, if there's availability, I'll reach out again. Right. That way they know, oh, cool. I'm a maybe for now. There's no pressure, nothing like that. I'm good. And then if there's a need, you can take all of those maybes. You're going to have hundreds of them if you're inviting thousands that you're going to be able to just hit them up. And be like, hey, there's a couple more spots left. Did you want to get in? And they're expecting, I'm going to say expecting, but they're going to, in essence, remember that they should have been expecting that text. So that's my maybe format. I hope you guys, um, hope you got that good there. If there's any questions on that, let me know. All right, so for the people that don't respond, oh, I didn't even answer the response one. <laughs> for the no response, um, that is something close to a maybe, maybe a two week before the event hit up the no response. Hey, I didn't get a response from you. Uh, did you get my last message? Right? So now you're really being personable. Right now you can literally see, and this is why it's great to track the data. I use a simple spreadsheet because I like spreadsheets. You guys may use CRMs and other things like that. Uh, Text Magic has its own little CRM built in so you can track it all there with lists and everything. So what I do is I make four lists for any event that I do. Um, and so whenever I have... Um, a invite, I'll have my spreadsheet open, I'll send out the invites, and then as they respond in, I'll notate it. Oh, this person's a yes. Oh, this person's a no. Oh, this person's a maybe. This person's didn't even answer, right? Actually, I only need to put the no answers because the way I structure it is I notate everyone that I've reached out to that day. I'll put it all like in a date and a number or something like that. And then I just notate yes, no's, and maybe's. And everyone that got marked that doesn't have a yes, no, or maybe are the no answers. So now they're already organized in its own little separate list in a sense. So if you guys have any questions, I know there's so much that I can go into on all these different processes, but this is what I do. This is my specialty. This is what I've been doing for years. I've been hosting events since 2012 and uh, it's been fun. This is the thing that I love to do. Um, the event has been extended for another, oh, maybe I went too far with you guys. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but at the end of the day, I think with what I do on events, on systems, on processes. I've got tons of free step-by-steps for you guys. So if you guys want any of them, uh, just feel free to get to get any anything, just reach out, right? Um, you can text me. Uh, my personal cell is 714-369-8528. That it goes personally to me. It doesn't go to any person of my company. I'm the only one that responds to those. So if you do receive a response, it is personally from me. I'm not like uh, the Gary V's and the, uh, the peoples of the world that just sent out to thousands and they're not really responding. Uh, if I text you, it was me that selected to text you. If I respond to you, it is personally me responding. So it's, um, a, it's a little different from these little community type platforms because uh, it keeps, keeps me personal. That's one of the best things I like about it. And it also allows me to make sure you're seeing my updates. So something you guys should all be doing. Um, Yay for personal, uh, do, 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 do. say it again. Jessica, what do you mean? Say it again. Hope, um, say it, are you asking for say it again on the response structure on what to do? Uh, if that is, oh, my number. Here, I'll just type it in the thing, guys. 714-369-8528. And if you text the word gifts, okay, you'll get all of my gifts, over 20 of them. It'll just send you right to my platform. Uh, the really cool feature is the network feature. You can promote your business completely free. There's nothing to buy on my platform. The only thing we have for even possible for sale is our t-shirts that we donate Bibles for, but uh, nothing to actually buy. 
uh, on the platform for you guys to get access to courses. There's gifts. There's access to promote your business. Uh, there's a way for me to promote you. And the most you're going to do is answer a couple questions for me. All right. So very, very simple there. Um, and if you guys have any questions on the processes that I use, I even have some blueprints on how to monetize your events. All right. This is something I've been teaching for a while. Uh, but mobile is going to be your biggest difference maker. You can do all of these processes and go through email and website and social media and you'll completely bomb. Right. Text is where you're going to get your responses. Text is going to how uh, you're going to get people to say yes, no, maybe and all that sense. So you got to have text um, and try not to just regard, put everything in there. You want to keep your text as short as possible. The best form of texting is to just have their first name and then add some type of line. And the cool thing about systems like text magic is that you can actually include their first name. So I can just literally have it to say, just add in their first name here and then put, Hey, uh, Mary, are you available March 8th? Right? Boom. John, are you available March 8th? Tim, are you, it just sends it all with their first name. So it's personalized. Very, very powerful. People love to hear and see their first name. It's the most beautiful sound in the world to them is their first name. Uh, and any other questions that you guys have on events, uh, please put them in the chat here, reach out directly as well. Um, but I will leave it at that for you guys so you guys can have some time for networking and to uh, connect and be able to ask more questions. So thank you, Remo. For thank you, Sandra. And hope you guys always remember you are too love blessed. It. Love to it, love stressed. it. Thank you so much, Manny. That was so awesome. Yeah. Oh, you're I appreciate welcome. it. You're welcome. Anytime. I'm All right, here. you guys. Um, yeah, that was really cool. So I hope you guys got you got a round of applause going through here, just by the way. Let you know through here. Okay. Um, just yeah. So Thank before you. we leave, I don't want you guys to escape yet. Give me about two or three minutes of your time before you escape because we have some prize offerings for folks. Um, so I wanted to give a chance to get your prizes and what prizes we have. I just need to pull them back up here is your first price prize is for one person and it's three months free access to the Remo, the Remo producer plan. And this plan is worth $1,200, okay? And then for five people only, free onboarding to get you started, which is worth 500 and free event support for all your events hosted on Remo for three months, okay? So those are pretty cool prizes to get you started here if you are thinking about doing that, that Remo piece. Okay, so I have put folks' names in here on an arbitrary little, little random piece here. So we're going to start pulling some names or emails. So if your name is called, I need a favor from you guys to hang on the line um, and join me at the a table after um, we're done with picking the names here. So I can just get your information and make sure I have that before you guys escape, okay? But I wanna thank everybody for joining. Um, it is so awesome to get to meet all of you. Um, if I haven't had a chance to meet you yet, I would like to keep in contact with all of you. Um, but otherwise, we're gonna get you going and I hope you got some awesome nuggets today that you're gonna take and use um, for your next online event, okay? So let's go get to the business of picking some winners. You guys are all winners, but let's pick some winners for this piece. How about that, okay? All right, all right. You see it scrolling through, scrolling through. All right, so my first winner is Gonzo Hall. Woot, woot, woot. go Gonzo. Okay. Gonzo has got the first price prize here. All right, and then doing it again. So now we're going for those five second place prizes here, okay? Again, if you win one of those prizes, the names were basically pulled through here. So please stay with me for a few minutes so I can get your information. CJ? Yes. CJ. Congratulations, CJ. So you're the first winner of the free onboarding, okay? And the free event support. There's four more of those offerings. All right, let's picking through the next one. Okay. 
if you can see. Congratulations, Karen. Yeah, Karen. Go, Karen. All right, third one. Yeah. Is that like an app? What is that? Web, uh, what is it called? Which one did I pick out? Uh, random name picker mini web tool. I'll send it over through you. Hannah? Nice. Congratulations. Hannah. All right. Yes, two more spots. Yeah, absolutely. Carrie Henley. Carrie Henley. You know that is I keep saying Carrie. Carrie, did you know, did you correct me? If it's Kari, my apologies. All right. I and last but not least, drum roll, please. Renee, congratulations, you guys. Renee. Awesome. So thank you uh, all cool. for joining today. Um, recordings have been made. Um, and I will get those out to you as soon as I can. But Manny, again, I can't thank you enough for everything that you shared. And I hope that I can um, actually have you come back and sometime in the future with us. I really appreciate that. Okay, great. Awesome. All Definitely. right. Thank you, I everybody. Um, I'm going to keep the room open for a little while so that we get a chance to mix and mingle a little bit more. I'm glad you enjoyed the um, event today. Um, and you're more than welcome. I'm really happy to. I've, I've learned a ton myself, so I'm really excited about this myself. Um, but go ahead. You get opportunities to network a little bit more before you leave out today. Again, for those of you who have won something, please reach out to me right now before you escape. Um, but have a blessed day and we'll get on with it. Um, let's work to strive past everything that we're going through right now. OK, take care, guys. Awesome.